everything looks pretty good, but I'm going to go to a top view. And what I want is this edge, this transition here, to be a little bit more straight. So I want to take this face and I pull it out. And again, with soft modification, it's able to handle that transition pretty well. And I can take this edge and pull it out just a little bit. And that gives me a pretty nice result. Let's look at it from the back view. And uh, everything looks pretty good here. It's nice and smooth. And I like the way that the lines are flowing around this. Looks like a smaller mirror here. And then we've got, you know, sort of this extra bulky geometry here. Probably something you would have seen in the 90s on a car. That looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the results. Let me go ahead and cancel that. And we're going to finish the form. Now, again, I can't stress enough. We're not trying so hard to match geometry or make specific geometry. If your mirror doesn't look anything like mine, that's perfectly fine. We're not using this in any other part of the study. We are simply just learning how the controls work and different ways that we can manipulate it. It's not going to be the easiest process the first time you go into it. And really, every time you come back in and you start manipulating these freeform models, you're going to learn something a little bit different that's going to help you out in the process. So don't get discouraged if you start to make something and it just gets really difficult or really hard to control. Just start over, you know, don't don't worry about scrapping your work at this point. Just delete it and start over or save it and make a new freeform model and just continue working with it until you learn the tools that you need to make these models. So far, I'm pretty happy with this. I will say that I don't know if this is actually going to shell or not because of this fine detail right here, but we're going to give it a shot. Realistically, you would want to make this into something else, whether it's a molded plastic part or just some additional feature work that you would need to do. But at this point, we have a, a couple faces here and we have the geometry that we're really looking for. So we're going to try to shell this thing and see if it works. Now we're getting a preview on the screen. It's actually shelling the inside of it, which is great. I'm going to make it a little bit thinner. I'm going to do 0.05. Now, it looks like I may have forgotten the period, so hopefully we don't lose Inventor here because it's trying to shell this out with a 5-inch wall thickness. We'll put the decimal point in there, and then we're going to select a face to remove. We're going to try to remove this face. It's not liking that very much. We'll go back to 0.1 and see if it'll, see if it'll actually do that. We're going to regenerate the preview. That looks like it's okay, so we'll say okay. So you see here that we have a problem, some of the geometry on the inside it didn't like, and that's really because I put this tight corner in here, and obviously I, I wasn't concerned with dimensions, but you can see that it actually did shell the majority of the model. Um, so that's pretty good. We could go to inspect, and we can take a look at a section view of this thing. Uh, let's pick a plane here. We'll go to our origin. We'll zoom out. Because of the blueprints, the planes are really big. We're going to select this, and we're going to offset it till the model and we'll apply it so you can see here that we actually do have a shelled version and that corner is really what was causing us problems because it is so tight here but again the important thing in here is that we have a solid model and the solid model allows us to do things like fill it edges or obviously apply apply a shell but if we wanted to do you know a small fillet on the corner it's not a problem because this is a solid model. It's a it's converted to a B rep, and we can do anything that we would do to any other model. Extrude cuts. Obviously, we could add stuff to it if you need bosses or extra geometry for mounting. Uh, we could cut the face away and all that different kind of stuff. Just a quick review: the general process, uh, the general idea that I want to leave you with in, in this specific case is that start small. Make sure you don't add too many divisions to the model. Don't get carried away by adding 10 divisions in this direction and 10 in this direction because you think it's going to give you better results. Start with the fewest number. You can always add more very easily later. You can subdivide the model a bunch of times or insert edges in certain areas. But don't get too caught up on having that fine level of detail. Now in this specific model, we started with two in each direction. And we can always go back in and we can edit the freeform and add more detail to it if we want. And, uh, and then anything after the fact will update. Sometimes things will fail. Obviously, if we make too many drastic changes to this corner, the shell might fail. But for the most part, everything is going to update fairly nicely. 
One cautionary thing I would leave you with in that regard is when you add additional features like extrude cuts or things like that, make sure that you constrain them or add dimensions to them in relation to your origin or you know fix them in some way because you want to make sure that they relate to this model in you know some respectable fashion. You don't want them to just be floating in space and you change something and you don't have a good way to control that. So make sure that you interact with it, but these forms are not parametric like other things. So you're not going to be able to base this on a sketch or an original solid or something like that. You're going to have to sort of pick and place and play with things to get them to work out and fit where you want. But the process is very straightforward as long as you don't overdo it when you get started. So hopefully that made some sense. It's a good idea for you to play around with this a good bit before moving on to the next module. We're going to be sort of transitioning and we're going to be using the face option. We're going to make sub D faces and we're going to use that to replicate some geometry with these blueprints as well. But again, play with this. Make sure that you're comfortable with it as we move forward. We'll be using the same tools over and over again. So it's a good idea that you're comfortable with them now. Moving forward, you'll get a lot more out of the course.